Yeah, sure do. Um, Jesse, uh, um, we saw the picture a couple weeks back um, with you guys all hanging out in Atlanta, kind of tip things off. Were you uh, kind of being recruited at that time? Um, yeah, you can, you can say something like that. Uh, I think AJ um, and Kyle and, you know, Casey did a really good job of recruiting me. Um, <laughs> uh, I thought that uh, just getting around those guys, just getting around the city. Um, you know, obviously we got the same agent as well. Um, so just getting around those guys um, and, you know, hearing, asking some questions about um, the team and um, about the city and stuff like that. And just, like I said, catching up, we got the same agent. Um, so it's always love um, from that instance as well. And when you talk to the Falcons about football, how did they envision you coming in and helping the defensive unit? Yeah, um, I think uh, at, you know, freshly just turned 26, um, being able to have the experience that I have um, to be able to elevate um, the room. I think we already have some really good players in that room. Um, but like I said, I remember when I was going into my year three, um, just out there playing football, playing some good football, but there's always another level that you can tap into. Um, and hopefully I'll be able to um, bring that out of Richie, you know, AJ and those guys, and um, they will do the same for me. So, uh, like I said, it's, you know, very exciting to be here. Um, and I think that my role is going to be a leader, um, someone that has experienced um, postseason, has experienced the bad, has experienced the good. Um, so I've, I've had a little bit of it all, um, at, you know, just five years into it at 26 years old, I'll have a lot of, um, you know, wisdom and, uh, stuff to talk about to the guys in the locker room. Thank you. Michael Rostin. Hey, Jesse, congratulations. Uh, first off, I saw a report, I think a couple of minutes ago that you're going to donate a million dollars to, uh, Atlanta, to single moms in Atlanta. Can you just explain that a little bit better or a yeah. little more maybe? Yeah, so, um, you know, obviously, um, you know, when you walk into the league, obviously you want to have an impact um, off the field as well. And uh, with me being raised by a single mom my whole life, um, being able to do some things in Cincinnati that I, that I always wanted to do um, with my mom being next to me, um, and then, you know, being able to be blessed with a new contract and stuff like that over the next, you know, four years, uh, I'm going to commit a million dollars to – um, single moms here in Atlanta um, and also back in my hometown. Um, just something that I'm, you know, very passionate about um, and something that, like I said, I'm not just a football player. I'm here to um, impact this locker room, but uh, as well, um, this community as well. So um, just something to, you know, kind of throw out there right now, a little bit more detailed on, you know, the initiative that I would love to partner up here, uh, partner up with um, here in Atlanta. Um, so, yeah, it's going to be a very exciting time, not just for, um, you know, football, but the bonds that I create um, off the field as well. And the second question I was going to ask you was going to be a Fort Wayne question since I lived there for four years, but uh, we'll save that. Instead, I wanted to ask you about kind of when you look at your versatility as a safety, I mean, where do you feel like you play best within the, con the construct of a defense? Yeah, um, like you said, uh, I think that I'm very versatile. So um, I've been in, you know, different situations. I haven't just played um, post safety, um, you know, my whole life. I've been in those different situations. So being able to, like I said, um, talk about my experience and um, talk about what I've seen. And, you know, this league is a copycat type of league. So um, once you kind of mark down, you know, the certain – stuff that you see, you know, week in and week out. Um, it's just a player, I think, like I said, that I that I am. And um, I'm going to be able to um, gain the trust of, you know, the players and the coaches and everyone in this locker room. Um, every single day I'll step foot in here. So um, very excited. Josh Kendall, The Athletic. Jesse, nice to meet you. Absolutely. I wondered if. Um, given the fact that Atlanta has a new defensive coordinator in Ryan Nielsen, so you don't know exactly how it's going to look. Did that give you any pause or play any factor in your thought process with all this? Yeah, um, I think um, 
you know, this is my first time going through this process, but um, I think you you look at the potential um, of this team um, and where we can get. Um, like I said, I've been um, in that transition year of um, winning the division and then going to the playoffs and nobody knowing the Bengals were going to go to Super Bowl. So I think it's a very similar um, situation here uh, where, you know, this division is, you know, up in the air and it's, uh, it's for us to take. And um, but we all know that's not going to be easy. It's going to be tough, uh, which is fine. I think that, um, you know, the guys in this locker room are more than capable of winning this division. So, um, yeah, not knowing I don't, I don't think you really focus um, much on the scheme and um, stuff like that. I was more focused on, you know, the, the people, what kind of people I was going to be surrounded by. Um, and yeah. Can you give us an idea of as much as you're comfortable as to in terms of how many teams were involved in this process, how hectic it was? Was was there a final group? Did it come down mm -hmm. to, you know, one or two options for you? Yeah. Um, you know, I can't I can't speak too much. I let my agent do that stuff. <laughs> but uh yeah, there it, it was uh, you know, a lot of teams that were interested. Um, but you know, with the cap space and stuff like that, you know, only a certain amount of teams can, um, you know, offer what they want to offer. And uh, with Atlanta being one of them, uh, I was uh, actually taking a nap and I woke yeah. up and was just going to get my car washed a normal Tuesday, taco Tuesday for me. Um, and, you know, I get a phone call from my agent on FaceTime and uh, he said he got the deal done with Atlanta and I, and I, I was sold right there and then um, didn't really talk much about other teams um, or anything like that. So uh, that was a little bit of the process of um, the free agency uh, craziness. I, I, I need to dig in a little to Taco Tuesday, if you don't mind. Do you have a specific taco place? Do you make your own tacos? We, we, we're we big food people here, so I'm, I'm going to need, you know, just a no, few I, details. I've heard, of, I've heard a lot of great things about the food. Uh, yeah, I'm a... Uh, just always in my family, we always talk about Taco Tuesday. Um, you know, we joke with my mom, like she has to mix it up a little bit on the Tuesdays because uh, we don't want tacos every Tuesday. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, it's, a, it's a, something that I love. Uh, Mexican food is uh, one of my favorites for sure. Thank All right, you, we'll, go to, we'll go to Charles Owen, AP. Hey, uh, welcome to Atlanta. And um, Thank you. I wanted to follow up, you, you mentioned the, the realities of cap space and 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 the Falcons have um, got some room after being restricted the last few years. How motivated were you by um, other moves this team has made this off season, especially uh, to bolster the defense? Yeah, um, I'm not sure if you guys heard. Like I said, I was able to you know catch up with Caden and uh, and David and really figure out um, who who each other were. Just sitting in the car for two hours in that traffic jam. Um, and I think the biggest thing is just meeting those guys and knowing that they're really good football players, but they're really good people. Um, and the 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 atmosphere, and you can kind of feel it. Um, you kind of see it. You see it on the film as well. What kind of team the Atlanta Falcons were, even when you know things were going well uh, last year. You know they were a very physical team. Um, I feel like that's the identity here in uh, Atlanta. And I'm um, just looking forward to be a part of that and continue to build and elevate that on another level. I'm sure Falcons fans are going to really enjoy your um, your comparison with uh, what the Bengals did. Um, what um, what do you see as as where the Falcons are in in the in the growth process? Yeah, um, you know they they're I, I don't know as much um, as far as. Um, you know, the past couple of years with the draft and stuff like that. But um, I do know that what the roster is right now and um, some of the core pieces that we're, you know, continue to bring in, um, having conversations with Coach Jackson and uh, Coach Nielsen and just talking about the pieces that they're going to continue to add, what type of players they're going to continue to add, um, gives you nothing but uh, motivation to where this team's going to be. Um, so, yeah, I mean, like I said, you turn on the film last year um, and it's a, Great place to build off of, for sure. All right, D-Led, do you have any follow-ups? Uh, yes. Um, the uh, You know, uh, in addition to the general observations, uh, 
you know, how do you see David and uh, Caden? Uh, you know, as that as that as you all get started, just looking at things on paper, how does that look for you guys? Yeah, I think it looks really good. Um, you know, the guys that come in, the new guys usually get a lot of attention, but um, I think you look at um, what's already here um, and being able to add on pieces and pieces that you know complement each other. Um, it's going to be really fun to do. Uh, like I said, I haven't been able to play with Caden or David, but um, one thing Caden did say he loved playing behind David. I mean, he loved playing be yeah, behind David and um, being able to line up against him and, and with him um, is something that I think is pretty, pretty cool once you hear it from, you know, peers, um, from player to player instead of, you know, coaches can tell you, you know, this guy's a great guy. But once you hear it from, you know, the guys that you go to war with every Sunday, um, in between those lines, I think it holds um, a lot of weight for sure. Okay, thank you. And I, I was the beat, backup beat writer the last time the Bengals went to the Super Bowl, so I, I taught Icky how to shuffle. And uh, <laughs> uh, uh, Wayne Box Miller told me to tell you hello. Yes, Icky, Icky Woods and and his family is is my favorite in Cincinnati. And uh, you got my guy Wayne Box over there as well. He he says he has a lot of swag. <laughs> <laughs> right. Michael, do you follow? Yeah, I just want to dig back into the that two hour car ride or so. Like, what what did you all talk about? Was it just football? Like, do you just start having try to find some commonalities? Like, take me in, take me in this van, and, and who was sitting where? Yeah, um, <laughs> that's a good question. You got big old David in there, uh, but you know, Caden being the guy he is, he sat in the back. I got a nice little seat. I was good. Um, but yeah, those two hours, um, you know, just asking each other what, you know, everyone's journey is so different um, in this league and it's so unique um, because of how hard it is to get here, first of all. Um, but yeah, just hearing, you know, um, Caden's story and how his dad played in the league, how he had younger brothers that, that was with the Eagles last year um, and just, you know, chopping it up, just getting to know each other on that on that level and then hearing uh, David talk about being from Nigerian, um, Nigeria, I meant, and him not going to college. He went to Canada. His whole family still lives in Nigeria. So um, this is this is part of, um, you know, building a good team. Is that, and that's part of getting to know your brother and getting to know uh, where they come from. Um, and that way, you, you, you when you communicate and you have those conversations, you actually have stuff to talk about, um, not just about football. Um, so yeah, there was, there was multiple conversations that we had. We joked around, um, um, with, you know, the atmosphere being, you know, the difference from, you know, New Orleans, what they like, what they don't like, what I liked in Cincinnati, what I didn't like. So a bunch of, um, genuine conversations, like I said, stuff that, you know, not just to keep us busy while we're in the car, but, um, stuff that I'll remember and, um, talk about, you know, when we go to OTAs or training camp and all that good stuff. So. Um, I think that's very important. All right, cool, I appreciate it. Thank you. Yes, sir. Uh, all right, guys, we got time for one more. Josh, you follow up? I just wanted to make sure I heard you right. Y'all were coming up from the airport today when you got stuck? Uh, we're actually coming from the hotel, um, okay, heading so to you... the facility. Yeah, yeah. So okay. prayers to that family. Um, I'm yeah, not sure. I, I was hearing a lot of, I'm not sure what exactly happened, but prayers to that family for sure. I got the bison in 22 here. <laughs> So Taylor, um, what uh, uh, you know, how did the process go when uh, you became a free agent, and um, how soon did the Falcons get in uh, uh, with you guys, and and what was the sign factor in signing with the Falcons, coming back uh, home? Yeah, so this whole process has been very new to me. Uh, this is the first time I was really a, a free agent where I can kind of explore my options. Um, so it's been a very Roller, roller coaster of a process you know there's lots of ups and downs and atlanta said they were interested from the beginning i uh, didn't know how much how interested they were but um there was some interest there and um honestly i was about to sign back with washington about two or three days ago and atlanta comes in with a with a better offer and, and i sat back and thought about it and you know my family's from around here i'm from around here um you know my little nephew's gonna be able to come see me at training camp and and go to the game so you know that was that was a big part of it and I'm just happy to be home and 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 uh, you know do that for my family. And I, I, if I recall one of the stories, you were a Brett Favre fan. Is there a Wisconsin tie? And um, uh, now, um, how are you converting your people over to Falcon Land? 
<laughs> so yeah, my dad was born in Wisconsin. So when I was born, I was automatically a cheesehead and grew up watching Brett Favre, and that's how I fell in love with the game. Um, he had a lot of fun out there, lots of passion for the game. Um, and that's what made me fall in love with it. So I've been trying to emulate him my whole life. Um, and yeah, you know, my, my mom, my sister, they're all going to be Falcons fans. And uh, it, it's a very special moment. Thank you. Yep. Josh Kendall? I just muted. I said I want. I did it yesterday with Johnu. I swore I wasn't going to do it again today. I'm over two. Nice to meet you, I'm Josh, with the Athletic. Can you tell me how you're approaching this this job? You've got a guy, in Desmond Ritter, a young player who's the returning starter, such as it is, only started four games. What's your mindset as you come in here? Yeah, you know, trying to be the best backup I can to, to him. Um, trying to help him in any way I can. Um, you know, I remember when I was a rookie and, you know, my second year as well, we had Sean Hill in the, in the room um, when I was in Minnesota. And, um, you know, as a young guy coming in this league, there's a lot of things getting thrown at you from every direction. Um, and it's hard to kind of balance, you know, what's going on. So, you know, Sean was a great mentor for me. He helped me a lot through that process. And uh, I just hope to be the same to, to Desmond. You know, if, if he needs anything from me or if I see anything that I can help him with, um, you know, that's what I'm here for. So, you know, I'm very excited to work with him. So it sounds like the Falcons were fairly upfront with you as what they it anticipated your role being. Yeah, yeah, you know, yeah, you know, drafted him high last year for a reason. Um, yeah. They believe in him for a reason. He, he showed some good film last year, and you know, again, you know, if, if unfortunate, if something unfortunate happens to him, I'll be ready to go. Um, you know, that's kind of been my life the last three years. So you know, it's it's kind of the same territory. Thank you, Tim. I'll keep going. I'll keep going, Matt, if you don't have somebody else in the queue. Josh, I can hop in real quick. Okay. Yeah. Will, go ahead. Hi, Taylor. Uh, first off, happy belated birthday. Thank um, you. I'm curious. You mentioned, you know, the last couple of years have been needing to step in or uh, fill in if relied upon or called upon. Has that experience in your mind made you better suited to come in now and work with Desmond in a little bit more of a supportive role? Yeah, 100%. Um, you know, like you just said, last two years, um, you know, after that playoff game, they brought me back for two years. Um, and that first year, they brought in Ryan Fitzpatrick. Uh, he was going to be the starter. And unfortunately, he went down in the first game and had to play. Um, and then last year, Carson Wentz coming in. Um, I was trying to help him with the whole playbook throughout the whole offseason. Uh, he picked it up really well. And, you know, again, unfortunately, he gets hurt in, the, I think, the eighth game of the eighth game of the year. Um, and I had to go in there and, and fill in for him. So, you know, again, I hope I'm I hope that doesn't happen to Des. Um, I hope the best for him. And hope he stays healthy. Um, but I feel like I've kind of gone gone through every situation you can kind of go through in football, and it's it's really kind of molded me to the the player and team that I am today. And you mentioned your time with the Vikings, but I want to take you back to 2017 in Houston. You get a chance to work with T.J. Yates, another Georgia native, now here with the Falcons. I'm curious, did did that relationship at all in Houston have any impact or? Uh, kind of affect your decision in any way to come here to Atlanta? No, um, I love TJ, but no. <laughs> um, I'm happy he's here, though. We've always had a great relationship. You know, from the moment I got to Houston, um, he was very receptive and, you know, kind of taught me a lot. Um, and we've kept in touch, you know, throughout the year. So, um, you know, he's a very special guy, good friend of mine, and you know, I'm happy he's here. Great. Thanks, man. Welcome back to Atlanta. Yeah, thank you. Charles Odom, you have anything? Hi, Taylor. Um, as a uh, self-described cheesehead from birth, um, I'm, I know uh, obviously you've got uh, Georgia connections as well. Um, did you follow the Falcons um, during your career with more than a casual interest based on your background? And, and, and what's your impression of how you fit and, and the offense that, you know, Arthur Smith has, has instituted here? Yeah, you know, I never really followed the Falcons when I was younger. Um, probably when Michael Vick was there, you know, it was very exciting. And, um, you know, I probably followed him then. But, um, you know, not too much. You know, again, I was, I was a big Packer guy. Um, but with, with this offense, you know, they've, they've, they've kind of changed the offense the last couple of years. You know, it was different with Matt Ryan, and it was different with Marcus Mariota. I'm sure it'll be different with Dez. I think this, this staff does a great job of kind of, putting their, their players in the best position to be successful. And, you know, so I'm, so I'm very excited to see what they do this year and, you know, how I can help. To follow up, I've been hearing uh, about your popularity in Washington and and how the fans liked you. And, and I've 
also been hearing good things from media there. Um, when you had to make the decision, um, how difficult was it to, to, to leave Washington? Oh, it was very tough. You know, that's, I, I feel like that's a, that's a home for me. Um, you know, I built a lot of great relationships there. There's a lot of great memories there. Um, you know, they, they gave me my second chance at football and, um, uh, there's a lot of special people up there, but you know, it's, you know, I'm going from one home to another. Um, so it's, it's a pretty easy process, but I'll be lying to you not to say I was, you know, a little heartbroken, um, to leave those people up there. You had your thoughts? Uh, yes. Um, just want to go back to the 730 yard game against New Hampshire. Uh, I know little Stevie Timms, he's one of the cornerbacks in that game. He told me all about it. What do you remember uh, uh, about that game against New Hampshire? So, yeah, that was our, our first true year in the conference in the CAA. And mm -hmm. I think it was our first conference game of that year. And they come down to our place and they put up 24 points in like the first five minutes. We're down 24 nothing quick. And I remember my offense coordinator coming up to me and saying, hey, we're going to throw the ball every play for the rest of the game. And I was like, all right. You know, I thought I was kind of kidding. You know, and 79 passes later, uh, we come back and beat them 64-61. Um, and that was that was a wild game. Yeah, threw for 730 yards and um, ran for 60 more. But the, the funniest part about that game was after the game, the head coach comes up to me and says, hey, man, he had 24 incompletions. You got to be better. So, you know. <laughs> It was one of those deals, but it was, that, was, that was a very special day. And um, the game, uh, uh, I believe it was your first NFL start against the Falcons in Carolina when Cam gets hurt. Uh, you almost went for, I think, a little bit over 300 there. What was was that kind of your breakthrough, like, hey, I can play in the NFL game? I don't know. That was a tough game because I remember Grady Jarrett, <laughs> he sacked me early in the first half, and I uh, tried to brace myself and ended up tearing my tricep. and. Uh, you know, I thought that might have been my last game I ever played. So I remember just hounding the trainer saying, hey, give me everything you got. Put a brace on my arm. I'm getting back out there and playing. And, um, yeah, the stats might look all right, but also threw three picks and we got beat. So um, that, was, that was a tough day. Thank you. Yep. Josh Kendall, any follow-ups? Yeah, just to back, back check some biographical stuff. Your nephew, how old is he and what's his name? He's a year and a half old. His name is Jack Joseph. Call him JJ. All right. Now, have you kept a home here? Yeah, so I was born and raised in Swanee, and then in 2020, once I was in the XFL, and then All once right. that kind of got old, I came back home. So I was I was living with my sister here in Flowery Branch, and uh, I could, you know, she was saying that she's, you know, trying to start a family, and I was like, that's that's my cue to get the hell out of here. <laughs> uh, so I, I bought a house down the road, and uh, so yeah, I've had a house in Flowery Branch for, since since late 2020. And, okay. uh, you know, it's a nice, easy drive in. I was going to say, are we talking like a seven minute drive to work now? Seven minutes this morning it took to get here. Yeah. Yeah. Two back roads and then, you know, pulling up. You're right there. Okay. That's all I got. Thanks, Tyler. Well, McFadden, you got anything else? On my end. Thanks, Matt. Hey, Charles, anything else from you? I'm good, too. I'm looking forward to seeing you up at the branch. Thanks, Charles. All right. Thank you, guys. Appreciate it. And uh, I think we will probably have Jesse Bates for y'all in about 30 minutes or so. Thanks, Tyler. Sweet. Okay, then uh, you walk us through the process that landed you here with the Atlanta Falcons. The process? Yes. Oh, man, it was uh, honestly the tampering, you know, tampering period started on Monday and it, uh, you know, kind of actually started kind of kind of slow <laughs> by uh my agent didn't give us a call for a while and then come to find out it was just because he was on the phone all day. So we weren't able to talk for a while. And um, then all of a sudden he he basically told us um, how Atlanta came out and um, how, in his opinion, it was the, the spot for us to go. Um, and that was already where kind of I wanted to go. So I, I was I was excited as soon as uh, as soon as the, the deal and the time frame and um, just everything came together. I was, I was really excited. Um. And uh, your familiarity with Ryan Nielsen, was that a factor in, in the fact that you know you know what they're going to be trying to do here defensively? Yes, it was a factor. You know, uh, scheme was big for me because of uh, um, the versatility I've put on tape. Um, 
I didn't really want to go somewhere where I'd be put into a box where I, where I don't get to do the, the multiple things that I think allow me to impact the game in a, a more dominant way. So um, knowing that I was going to get to go with Coach Nielsen and knowing um, how he has coached defense, how he has coached me personally also um, these last four years uh, was a was a huge factor in, in the fact that, you know, as long as the, the contract worked out and as long as um, Atlanta showed that they were serious about pursuing me, uh, that I would be very excited to go and, and to pair up with him again. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. I'll just go then. Uh, Kate, and just out of curiosity, and I apologize if Dave just asked this, I was being distracted. Uh, no worries. What did you learn from your dad <laughs> from, fo from a football perspective? I was gonna say that's. A, I was about to have to give you a lot more. Than I, I, I realized that. <laughs> uh, that was good. Good. Um, football wise, just to like he's taught me work ethic in it. He's taught me how to push, how to strive, all of that, but also just how to have fun and compete. You know, growing up with him, obviously for him, sports was a job, um, but it, he never made it like that with me or any of my siblings. I, I don't feel like they may say differently, but he allowed it to just be fun. He allowed it. I had to go wake him up at four or five in the morning to go work out before school. He, he wouldn't do it for me. Like he, he wasn't going to come force me to do it. You know that that I had to want it. You know what I'm saying? So just, you know, he kind of taught me. I, I said everything about it, but the like the love of competition, the fact that it's a kid's game and it's got to be fun. The fact that you got to work hard and, and you got to know that there's always someone out there trying to outwork you or get to the spot that you're trying to get or now that's trying to take the spot that I've earned. You know what I mean? Um, but at the end of the day, have fun with it. Enjoy it. It's a kid's game and and uh, play to the best of your ability at all time for the glory above. Uh, you kind of hit it on that. I actually uh, I met your dad a few times. I used to cover the Lions, so I met him when he would come back. And we talked awesome. about his life as, as a chaplain. And uh, what, what's that like? as a kid, as a teenager, when your dad's the chaplain of an NFL team, like I just, I can't imagine what that's like as a kid. What was that like for you? It was fun. You know, I think for me, obviously I got to watch him play. So there wasn't too much awe factor when it came to players, NFL facilities, none of that. Cause I was on, you know, Pontiac, I was in Pontiac stadium with Superdome with, with him, Silverdome with him. So um, maybe not necessarily that factor, but they just, um, getting to see his um, relationship with uh, the men that he got to work with and getting to see him um, push himself uh, spiritually and in his face so that he could help those grow around him was uh, really awesome to get to watch and, and inspirational to me and, and how I carry myself, even though I'm not a chaplain. I'm I'm here for anybody. If you have any questions about spirituality or faith, and, and I hope that I can um, impart some wisdom on you and, and also learn from all those around me because um, uh, it's kind of awesome how, how God places people together for certain and specific reasons. Thank you. Yeah. Josh Kendall. Hey, Kate. Nice, nice to meet you. Nice uh, to meet you, Josh. You mentioned the role that you've sort of carved out for yourself, the multiple role you've carved out for yourself. Can you explain a little bit to us what you see that as being positionally specifically? You know, I can't say exactly for how the coaches are going to uh, use me here just yet because I've only gotten to talk to them briefly and really it was more of a, Hi, I'm really excited to be here. And them, hi, we're glad you're here. Um, but in New Orleans, I was able to play on the edge. I played a game at the end, and it would have been more if I hadn't got a little hammy. Um, I uh, was able to pass rush on third downs. I was also able to drop on third downs, and I was able to back up Demario and Pete at Mike and Will. And then when my opportunity came to start at that position in Will, um, I was able to go out and, and put together a couple really good string of games and and uh make some big plays and, and help impact those games big time for our team so at the end of the day i'm someone that can play on the line play outside linebacker inside linebacker um i know i got things that i got to continue to work on and sharpen but I, I have some pretty strong traits and um my hand uses block destruction and and pass rush and um i'm excited to be able to come and, and use that uh, however uh, nielsen and the staff uh, want to use it from our perspective the outside looking in it looks like you know, this guy came out of nowhere. Did mm. How did it feel to you? Did you feel like, I just need my opportunity? I just need my opportunity, and it's always been here? 
or did you really feel like you just sort of became that player slowly over time? You know, I, I remember my dad asked me after my first OTA practice, how was it? And I was like, honestly, dad, I felt like the best athlete out there. Like, I felt great. Yeah. And he was like, all right, well, now, just so you know, vets don't take OTAs very seriously. It's going to ramp up. <laughs> like, I, I'm going to tell you that it's going to ramp up. But um, honestly, from from my first practice in OTAs, my my training camp, my preseason games, like I knew the type of player I can be and the type of player I was. Um, what needed to happen was some uh, personal development in in some areas that yeah, I was I was really great at certain areas already coming in as a rookie. Um, but there were some things that I had to develop and grow. And for example, I played on ball. Like my senior year, I played defensive end in, at Idaho and. Right shifting to to Mike linebacker when I got to New Orleans as a rookie my eyes it, it was hard to see the plays happen especially when all of a sudden you haven't played this position and it's it's a way faster speed than you've ever been in before these guards are pulling and these tight ends are swapping faster than you've ever seen so having to develop my eyes my off ball linebacker skills and and then continue to sharpen coverage and uh, man coverage zone coverage things like that was something that that I had to work on and um honestly I, I tore my ACL my rookie year and, and that kind of put a damper on some of my progression but um by god's grace i was able to bounce back and uh, continue to sharpen and uh when the opportunity came i was able to take advantage um just thankful to the king for that thank you yeah Eli? yeah um Kaden, uh <clears throat> i was gonna ask about the you touched on your pass rush numbers but i guess uh you know that's uh the 10 hits and seven sacks, you know, the, the defensive end part of it uh, was how much was from defense, how much was from uh, a defensive end, how much was from linebacker. And uh, has your dad told you who his college roommate was? And do you have lessons to learn how to do the dirty bird? <laughs> <laughs> uh, yes, he has told me. Actually, he's he's had a few college roommates because you know you, you start moving around and stuff and i've met a few um i believe are you referring to uh the the almost author of that dirty bird dance yes <laughs> yes yes <laughs> yes i i'm gonna have to ask my dad to call him up for me to teach me because i'm not the best dancer so uh i'm gonna i'll, I'll get some personal lessons from him though <laughs> um and uh bastards wise um it kind of came well uh da and, and nielsen and you know the way they over there put Put together a third down package was um unique in that we all kind of got up on the line you know three linemen two linebackers sometimes uh you know two dbs at the same time all of us up there and at the end of the day the defense didn't know where we were going to line or the offense didn't know where we were going to line up that week how we were going to line up and it changed play by play so you know what some of the snaps may have logged me in defensive end some of them i may have been at a linebacker mugged up in the b gap um a few hours probably off ball so uh, at the end of the day, it kind of came from multiple positions. Um, that's one of the things that, you know, I liked about um, Coach Nielsen is, is how he has that history and his background and um, how he helped put together the third down plan over there and, um, you know, kind of orchestrate a lot of that. So I, I was excited to follow him and, and work with him in this. Thank you. Of course. Mike, you might have one, time for one more. Sure. Uh, Kaden, uh, this is a way, way away from football, I guess, but now that you've signed a pretty nice contract what do you what do you want to do with some of that and also like taking i guess i'm going to take your faith out of this too because i feel like that's where this answer was going but like what's your favorite thing to do away from football and let's say away from faith as well I, and was i right in taking that away yeah okay um you know i was thankful for the contract and the opportunity to, to make that family and or make that money and, and set up for my family um what i want to do with it honestly i just you know, I love my people, the people that are around me, my 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 wife, my my two kiddos. Um, I just want to spend some good time with them. You know what I mean? I want to get down here to Georgia, find a find a good little you know good little spot, and and uh, you know kind of get a little because we rented in New Orleans. We kind of bounce back and forth with our family and whatnot. And I'm just excited to kind of settle down with them. You know, get a place that we can truly call home. That's not just saying homes where the family is. You know what I mean? So uh, excited to do that. And um, honestly, I'm excited. I, Something I'd like to do is probably help um, my siblings, you know, achieve their dreams. Because at the end of the day, I was the oldest and my parents were able to probably invest a little more financially into me um, than maybe some of my others because of, you know, just you're the first one going through it all. Um, so I'd love to, you know, kind of help them do that as well. 
in the in, in, in the game. So uh, you know, coming down here was especially not just that, and me just getting the opportunity to play with play with some great players as well. You know, like that 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 kind of was uh, the drawing factor for me over here. So you're not the the first player to mention Coach Nielsen and, and mm -hmm. really wanting to continue to to play with him. Caden Ellis earlier mentioned that that's a reason he wanted to come yeah. to Atlanta as well. What is it about Coach Nielsen that really players want to play for him and will even change teams to do so? Uh, the numbers, you know, the numbers speak for itself. You know, like if you go check on his resume, you could you could you you you, you see you see that and. and I feel like for players like Caden as well, you know, just get getting the opportunity to still get to learn from such a such a coach and such a person. That I think that that helps in the long term. That helps in the long term of a person's career, and it just helps in getting your game game way better. Because I, as a player, I'm still learning. I've been with him for six years. I'm still learning things. You know, like we're still evolving. So that's 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 it. You mentioned the players as well uh, mm -hmm. too. Grady Jarrett mm -hmm. as a defensive tackle. I mean, what's been yeah. your impression of him from afar? And then Chris Lindstrom yeah. going up against him directly. Yeah. I mean, what? How excited are you to now be on the same team as those two guys? Uh, it's 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 great. You know, a play a player like Grady and uh, and such such the, the 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 career he's put together to this day. You know, like it, it, that that speaks for itself. And uh, Chris as well. I got to play him a couple times. Played him last year, and you, you just tell like he's a player who is. You know, over the years, got better and just and, and just been 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 playing at a high level. You know, like last year, the season he put together, he 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 locked it down. <laughs> you know, so that 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 getting a practice with them guys, a practice against Chris and uh, on a daily, that that I think that that would be great as well. You know, you I want will to keep going. Yeah, you got more. Keep going. <laughs> All right. I got um, so at the start of the 2021 season, six yeah. game suspension. I know at the time, you know, you were surprised to learn yeah. about the suspension. But has that experience changed your approach to your diet, to supplements? Have you grown from that experience at all? Yeah, definitely. I've grown from that. Getting to uh, now basically all my supplements are from the same brand and uh, went through the NSF, uh, NSF certifications and all that. So I, I have. I look at them things way more strictly now, you know, like when I when I based on my diet and supplements. And then last one for me is are there any, any kind of qualities, be they characteristics or like traits that you want to bring over from what you guys had in New Orleans to this defensive line here in Atlanta? I uh, just bring bring how do I say bring the will to fight, you know, every time. But while you're doing that, have fun with it. You know, while you're doing that, have fun with it and just and just play for each other. You know, I I feel like I feel like that those are uh, those things would uh, would would help a lot and uh, take us far. Awesome, thanks, David. Awesome. Appreciate, appreciate it. it. No uh, problem. We'll go to Reggie. Are you excited? Can you guys hear me? Yes or no? Can yeah. you hear me? Yes or no? You can hear me. Yeah. I have a question, man. Um, funny enough, I actually used to uh, work in Louisiana, so I used to cover the Saints before I moved to Atlanta to cover the Falcons. You obviously were in New Orleans moving here. I know the relationship between these two teams. I mean, is that I, I think it's just interesting, the fact that how much hate there is between these two teams. Is that at any point kind of a thought for you? And maybe how interesting is it going from a Saints to now the Falcons? Uh, not really, because at the end of the day, you know, like it's 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 a rivalry in the sense of it being a rivalry, but at the same time, it's it's a job, you know, like it's another game, you know. That's 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 how I that's how I think about it. I don't change my approach to us. I don't change my approach to us games, saying it's you know I'm doing this or I'm playing this or I'm playing that, you know. Like I just I I go I go into games with the same approach. I'm curious also when you used to come to Atlanta, um, mm -hmm. you obviously saw how much that fan base really came out for those games yeah. against the Saints. I mean, do you what do you kind of remember about your time coming to Atlanta and what the city, what this fan base is, I guess, coming from the outside perspective? Uh, from the outside, you know, the, the the stadium got the stadium rocking every time. The, the the Atlanta fans always had the stadium rocking, and you you always you always got you a little bit or two from <laughs> you hear a little bit or two from behind, but uh you know that it, it it was always great. You know, getting to play in such a great atmosphere. You know, I think my last question is: How do you kind of see yourself um, and your skill set? I guess coming to here in Atlanta, maybe your role that you fit 
in this defense? And um, I guess what do you think this team kind of can be for this season as they've added different pieces and obviously looking yeah. like this year? Uh, based for me, I, I I I think the sky's the limit. You know, like especially with the pieces we've got, we 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 we've got people on every level, and just to just to add to to what the team's got, just in the sense of myself and Grady, like just just to add and and just build build something great. You know, that's 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 what that's how I think about it, and that's that's the approach I'm taking towards it.